Wow, this is a piece of folding, isn't it? Look at this. You fold a folding money, but folded money of this sort is absolutely amazing. Made by Marty Rees, a fellow origami and puzzleist. In each of those rectangles, she made them from two one dollar bills. I made one myself with two, two one, just one dollar bills in three directions. It's very, very fine work. You've got to be the nearest tenth of a millimetre almost in constructing it. Very, very fine work, but this is delightful. I met at a gathering I was attending in Atlanta recently, which we attend every two years, and there's a mixture of origamists uh, and mathematicians, recreational mathematicians, uh, magicians, a whole crowd of people, people who debunk the pseudoscience. Martin Gardner was a wonderful correspondent in the Scientific American in the 60s and popularised many, many things, particularly recreational mathematics. So this was a celebration in his memory, which we have every two years. And some of the things I've got here, I've just picked up from this gathering. That was, I think, one of my favourites. Another one I picked up, again, it wasn't an exchange, but it was shown to me by a very talented Japanese guy. This is made by strips of staples, and when you put 18 of them together, you get this wonderful construction, very firmly made. The last piece has to be broken in half to get it in. There we are, there's one with a little break in it, otherwise you can't get the last pieces in. All made from Japanese staples. What a wonderful idea. As soon as I got back to England, I thought, let's have a go at making it out of English staples. Much tougher. These English staples I used, cut them down to the right size, and so far my first attempt is a bit raggedy, to say the least. There's bits have broken off and everything else, but it's a start, and I shall improve my way, I think. But it's a tough piece to put together, but very satisfying when you do. <laughs> I think the best part of the stuff I found at the convention were the optical stuff. Now these are really remarkable things. They were not part of the exchanges but they were gifts given to me by various people. For instance this one here is, well look at it, it's a bit of glass, it's fibre optic. What's happened here is they've heated the middle of it and then twisted it 180 degrees. You can see the twists in it. We used to sell on the website one which we pulled further apart and it tapered and they're called tapers magnified but this is a, another form of Extraordinary production made by, well, very talented engineers. I think that this is textured upside down, and when I put the glass on it, it will be the right way up. Because what this thing is doing is it's twisting at 180 degrees, and I think they're used in night glasses or something where the actual dimensions are so tight they can't put in reversing prisms, which is the normal way of doing it. So this is reversing fibre optic instead. Everything's turned 180 degrees. What a wonderful piece of engineering that is. Then the other items I got also from this convention, and these are not quite so refined but still very interesting optical effects. This one for instance is called virtual video I think it is, and when you illuminate it and then move it very slowly back and forward you get some wonderful animation. I think there's something like 12 stations or 10 stations of movement here. Some of them when you look at it very carefully actually blur quite a bit but the eyes don't seem to mind that. You still seem to get a wonderful smooth movement there of the of the baseball players and there's quite a number of these around and I think they're just f fabulous to look at. All in full colour, almost three-dimensional they seem to be and the movement is so good too. I love it. Then there's a guy I met for the first time who has a business card. Blank. Blank? Well it is blank except when you turn it over and then you see his name appears. Extraordinary. Adam Rubin. Controversion. On the back of the pixel to those particular points, they've been slightly heavier printed, and so only from one side can you see it. It's a bit like a gauze, the old um, gauze trick they use in theatres, where it's illuminated from the front, it's visible, when it's from the back, it's completely invisible, and so on. But to do it as a business card, I thought it was very adventurous. And when he first gave it to me, I was trying to look for something else like random dot stereograms, but no, it's a, it's a Controversion business card. Beautifully done. And my favourite piece, I think, from the opticals was this wonderful card which requires a bit of lasering. And then the effect is astonishing. It's just a little credit card thing with a series of little cells in it which are all holograms. The, the, the best one by a long way is this one here. I'm going to move this up and down like this and you get this animation effect. And then when I take it further back you get some wonderful magnification and then you can see very clearly what's happening. There's a globe of the world turning. Does your world turn for you? It does for me. Then the other cells are just single items. Here's the first one. This is a, a QWERTY keyboard. Let's get it into better focus. And then Orion, star formation. 
a difficult bit of differential equations, partial differentials, other bits and pieces. And over here, there's a nice piece here which appears to animate too, which is very nice. I like that. A wonderful piece of, of technology. So the optical thing is probably my favourite bit of the whole lot, I think. Now here's a familiar object, but again, it's given to me as a gift. It's uh, constant, uh, solids of constant diameter. And of course, to show it best, and they've been very nicely done by 3D printing, we'll put it on a big book and see how beautifully it rolls. It wobbles about, but that is absolutely smooth. It's as if there's spheres underneath, although there's a tiny bit up and down motion from the central gravity, I think. You don't feel the motion, but you feel the, the slight preference for it to be in a certain place. Very nicely done, and they roll beautifully. Solids. My favourite item, which was actually uh, one of the exchanges, which makes it all the more valuable for me, was this flower clock. The only previous flower clock I ever had was this one here, which I saw and never got. This is uh, one that got away at uh, the Frankfurt Gift Fair about 20, 30 years ago. A lovely idea for a flower clock. What this chap's done, something is much more interesting, he was following on from a, an article from Linnaeus, all about three centuries ago. He's given me a little box in which, gathered for Gardener 12, he includes instructions and 12 lots of seedling plants. And the idea is to put them in little flower pots around, including things like dandelions, which open at different times or close. Every one of these either opens or closes on the hour, roughly. I don't know whether that's how accurate it is, but it's something I've really got to try. Nice bit of background to give it to, 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 to describe some of the physics or the, 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 the botany. And then the pieces themselves, each of them is going to take obviously a few weeks or a few months to, to mature. And I've got to make a flower clock, I think. That, I think, is my favourite one. What a lovely concept it is. It was a very good gathering for me, and I have found some very, very nice pieces. These are, these are very interesting conventions to turn up to. Wow.